Welcome to Bible 180, Micah. Yahweh makes his case that Israel has broken the covenant. I ask anyone, have I been unfair in my judgment against my people? They've rebelled against me, and so I have sent the Assyrians to judge them. Micah lays into false prophets who whine that Micah should not be so negative. Micah laments, these people just want a prophet who will prophesy them more wine and beer. But this evil nation will not be condoned. Those prophets who preach peace when God is upset, the Lord will wage war against them. The rulers who despise justice will feel the full weight of the Lord's justice and it will crush them. Still, says Yahweh, I will make my people into a shining example. One day people will say, let us go to the mountain of the Lord. Yahweh will judge from Jerusalem, settling disputes between nations, and peace will replace war. All the nations will walk in the ways and in the name of the Lord. I will gather the lame and the exiles, and kingship will once again return to Jerusalem. Out of Bethlehem will arise a ruler over Israel whose origins are from ancient times. He will shepherd God's people all the way to the ends of the earth. I will save a remnant even though I punish my people. The occupying forces will be completely removed from the land and the remnant of Jacob will be like a roaring lion among the nations, a true king who rules over other nations. Then Micah, kind of like Moses, calls upon heaven and earth to be witness to this breach of contract God's people have made. How have I burdened you, Yahweh asked. Was it when I saved you out of slavery or when I rescued you from the Moabites? I don't really need your sacrifices, but what I do want is I want you to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Unfortunately, Israel has not done these things. She's filled with corrupt cheaters and bold-faced liars. These cheaters amongst God's own people shall not prosper. He will not bless them for taking advantage of others or for dishonesty or selfishness. No, he'll punish them so that the others may not be deceived into thinking that the Lord condones evil. That's why he will sweep away the wicked and those who excel at doing bad. Uh, things are so bad that even families cannot be trusted to treat each other fairly. A man's enemies are the members of his own household. Therefore, says Micah, I will wait in hope for the Lord. So mock me if you wish, but the Lord is my light. Though he judges me for my sin, he will hear me when I cry out to him. Walls will be rebuilt, fences will be reestablished, and there will be safety and security from sea to sea. In the closing verses, some grace-filled verses you maybe have never read, Micah says, Yahweh will once again show wonders just like he did at Egypt. Nations will be humbled. The fear of the Lord will be rekindled among the nations. Who is a God like you who pardons sin and forgives the transgressions of the remnant of his inheritance? You do not stay angry forever, but delight to show mercy. You will again have compassion on us. You will tread our sins and hurl underfoot and hurl all our iniquities into the depths of the ocean floor. You will be true to Jacob just as you have promised.